Hey everybody, this is Franco and I have another update on my PM728VT CNC conversion. I'm going to do a little bit more talking here about the uh, spindle control under CNC. So the first thing I did is I replaced the uh, previous bushing you saw with a, a new bushing. I'm going to call this a prototype. I'm not 100% sure about the design yet, but what this does, this bushing wedges in there. It, it takes up all the play between the drive pulley and the shaft. And it also gives me a groove to drive an encoder. So I don't have the encoder yet and I haven't made the mount. So that's why this is a prototype. But the idea is I'm going to just use like an O-ring and use that as a belt to drive an encoder. So that's all one piece. And if you listen, there's no more clearance and there'll be no more uh, toggle. Right, Not a sound. doesn't make a peep. And that's good. My... I don't have any more quill action. I can't use this like a drill press, which for me, that's fine because this is going to become a CNC machine. Uh, and now let's power this thing up. Just give you a little demo. Oh yeah, disclaimer. I have uh, superseded the safety switch. You're not supposed to turn this thing on with this cover open. So um, here again, don't, you know, be safe. Don't hurt yourself. Don't, don't do this. I'm, I'm operating in an unsafe condition here. So, all right, there's the disclaimer. That's full speed. Very quiet, in my opinion. For 4,300 RPM, that's, that's good. All right, so that's the first part of it. Uh, bushing, drive the encoder, all that good stuff. Uh, onto the electronics, so we know this this mechanical forward and reverse switch, it's basically just two switches. There's one switch, uh, it closes when you want it to go forward. When you go back to off, both switches are open. When you go to reverse, it closes this other switch and it puts it in reverse. So the way this switch is mechanically designed, you can never have forward and reverse closed at the same time. Like you can't you can't physically flip the switch fast enough to make forward and reverse both close at the same time. And that's, you know, that's kind of like a, I guess I'll say a safety feature built into the, into the, uh, you know, control unit here for the, uh, the brushless motor. So one switch for forward, second switch for reverse. You never want to close both of them at the same time. So onto the centroid acorn part of this. And uh, if you guys watch my YouTube channel, you are probably aware of the fact that I really like the Centroid products. I think this Acorn system is awesome. Um, keep an eye on them. They're always, always updating the software to give you more features and make it more powerful. It's really, really cool to see what they're doing with that product. I, I, my personal opinion, I already think it's the, I already believe it's the best way to go for DIY CNC, uh, but they just keep making it better and better adding more features. It's, uh, it's great stuff. Um, uh, so another thing I like about them is they give you these nice wiring diagrams. And we're going to talk about that in a second, but they're relay board. This is the um, eight channel relay board that you get with the Centroid Acorn. So what you could do, if we go to the schematic, you can see basically, um, long story short, if you look at these relays, and I lost my my pointer. Hang on a second. If you look at the wiring diagram, there's a common, there we go, there's a common, there's a normally closed contact and a normally open contact. Same thing for each of these relays. So you could just, you could just take two of these relays, make one of them the spindle forward, make the other one the spindle reverse, and what would happen is, is when you, when you energize this relay, it would close so you could imagine the current coming in and going back out, right? There's a switch to turn it on to forward. And then you could do the same thing with reverse. When the switch closes, right, latches, and it comes back out. So you could have two circuits, right? But here's the thing. Um, you know, that mechanical switch on the front of this thing, you can't switch that terribly fast, right? It's really hard to go from forward to off to reverse so quickly where you could have both of them close at the same time. 
with the uh, relay board, you know, if you just wire it up like I just said, basically just use each, you know, two relays uh, to replace the two switches. I'm not like an electronics expert, but I think you have a, a much greater chance of a scenario where maybe just momentarily this relay and this relay, you can imagine these as two different switches, they're closed at the same time. So what can you do to avoid that? Well, you can do something like this, and I'm going to explain it here in a second. Um, this is a little bit of relay logic that, I guess this is relay logic, you know, I'm sure. One of the things I, like uh, I like about having a YouTube channel is there's people out there that are smarter than me that watch my videos, and they'll often correct me when I say or do the wrong thing. So I'm going to call this relay logic. Maybe there's a different term for this, but... What I've done here is I've, I've set up a little circuit that uh, it never lets, um, basically it'll never let both switches like be energized at the same time. And let me attempt to show what this is doing. So this orange wire, this orange wire is bringing the positive voltage. In this case, it's only, only three volts, but it doesn't matter for what we're doing right now. This orange wire brings positive voltage to the common of the first relay. So I'm going to call this my forward relay. It brings positive voltage to the common of my forward relay. And then what I do is I take the normally closed side of the relay. So that's the that's the side of the relay that lets the circuit or completes the circuit when the relay is not energized. So right now this this relay is not energized. So the power is coming in through the, the center one, the common, and then right now, because it's not energized, power is coming out of the normally closed side of it, right? And I have that come into the common of what's going to be my reverse relay. So that's the first thing to remember. So power supply comes into the common of the forward. The normally closed side of the forward relay, I bring the power through that into the common of the reverse relay. Now, the switch for forward, this green wire is on the normally open side of the forward relay. And this green wire goes up here and it powers this LED and then I take it back to common. You don't need to worry about that too much. Just know that this green wire is bringing the power up to the forward LED. Um, now over here on the reverse one, the normally open side of that relay, this yellow wire brings the power to the reverse LED. And let me just show you how that works. I'm going to kind of spread out here, but let me... Okay, so on here, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to put my, my... There's my spindle in automatic mode. I'm going to put my spindle in manual mode. Right now, I'm in forward. And I'm going to I'm going to power it, right? So that green button makes the spindle turn on. So let me let me turn it off. Now I'm going to put the camera on the the relay and the light so you can see what happens. So when I give it power or turn the spindle on, boom. So there you go. Uh, the forward relay is energized and it's sending power to the green LED. So that's basically putting my machine in forward mode. Uh, now, what I'm going to do here in manual mode, with manual mode will let me just jump from forward right into reverse. So if you could imagine, what I just did would be like a, uh, like, it would go from whatever velocity I was forward and immediately try to jump into reverse. So forward, jump right into reverse. And uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that with this machine, this type of machine. Um, I think on, a, you know, more complex machines with variable frequency drives, the drive may have some uh, intelligence built into it to react appropriately when you do this. I'm not sure. I'll be honest with you. I haven't played around with VFDs a whole lot. But uh, basically, this is, like, this is like going from forward and kicking it right into reverse. So let me show you what happens here. So we're on forward right now. 
boom, reverse, forward, reverse, and you can see the acorn board, there's forward, reverse, forward, and then we'll just stop it. There's spindle stop. So that may not seem like a real big deal, but if you follow the logic, there's, there's physically no way under it with this wiring to power the forward and reverse circuit at the same time. Um, it, it really doesn't matter how quickly the ACORN electronics are working, right? The ACORN is extremely fast. It's a very fast motion control uh, unit. The relays, though, these are just mechanical relays, right? So that's the limitation in this system. So uh, the, the relays, I, I can tell you, they cannot physically switch as fast as the acorn can switch, right? The acorn can switch many, 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 many times per second, right? Um, these mechanical relays, they have a limit. And in fact, if, if you try to keep switching these relays eventually you get to this point, I don't know what you call it in the electrical world, I'm gonna call it float. You get to this point where the relays are just pinging around in there in some weird state, maybe intermittent, intermittently opening and closing in a very unpredictable way, right? So that's that's the limitation of mechanical relays. Um, but they're simple and they're cheap and uh, they work great nine times out of ten. And the nice thing is, uh, this is a side note, because of the way this is designed, if you if you happen to fry one of these relays, this board is relatively inexpensive, so you can just replace this board. Where if you're using the relays that are built into a, a board, um, you you got to be careful because you know that's soldered to the board, right? So if these relays were all soldered to this acorn board, like a lot of breakout boards are designed, if you'd fry a relay, you know you've just damaged your board, but the, uh, the Acorn folks, they made this a separate unit, so if you fry a, a relay, you can just buy a new board. They're, they're not even that expensive. So this is, this is actually a really nice feature. But anyway, um, you, you, there's no way under this circuit for both of these relays to be powered at the same time. Uh, even if you, let's just say one of the relays fail. So let's just say this, this forward relay fails and it's stuck in a mode where it's trying to power the machine in a for so you know the the green wire here that's on the normally open side of the relay let's just pretend that it it sticks so no matter what you do the screen uh, normally open side of the relay is energized well what that did was is it took the power away from the normally closed so even though you may try to go and put the machine in reverse, you know, you're, you have no idea that your relay just failed, it's stuck in forward, you may be trying to turn it on in reverse. Uh, you can't because the power can never get to this relay. All right, I've probably talked about that long enough. Hopefully that was made sense and um, was semi-easy to understand. And uh, if... You know, maybe someday I'll get a wiring diagram that explains this, but but for now, there you go. That's my concept here for replacing the forward and reverse switch on the uh, Precision Matthews milling machine. And uh, hopefully uh, that made sense and will help you guys. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.